But it isn't the Italian army defending those breaches, it's the Germans, and the Germans know they're coming. If I were here in 1943, I'd be surrounded by German machine gun positions, firing down the hill at British troops as they try to advance to take the positions above me. It was, of course, the most wrenching, terrible loss for them. Eighty years ago, the Allies launched Operation Avalanche, the beginning of the invasion of mainland Italy. I'm here at the final resting place of many who fought and died in that campaign, Commonwealth War Graves Commission's Salerno War Cemetery. Each of these headstones tells the story of a serviceman who died here in Italy, buried side by side, regardless of rank or status. They stand testament to the fighting that engulfed this area in September 1943. In this episode, we'll be telling the story of two commando, and in particular, Henry Wellesley, otherwise known as the 6th Duke of Wellington. Two commando landed at nearby Vietri Beach on the morning of the 9th of September, 1943. And Henry rests here, commemorate equally amongst his comrades. What is clear is that he was adored within his immediate family. He was the only son. He had one elder sister of my great uncle. He was a very much a country person. Um, I, I found uh, at Stratfield say uh, his um, bird's eggs collection, <laughs> for example. Um, and uh, his fishing rod I found at Stratfield Say. Um, he joined the army originally, I think, in the coal streams, coal stream guards, and then moved to the Duke of Wellington's regiment. And then when he succeeded to the title, uh, Duke of Wellington, he came back to England briefly, if only for, um, he was at Stratfield Say for, for two months having succeeded, therefore taken over the responsibilities of the dukedom. Um, but then he volunteered and was uh, posted to number two commando. He, as far as I can see, he was very close to his sister and his parents. Um, and um, it, it was, of course, the most wrenching, terrible loss for them when he died. As a youngish man, I think he was 31 when he was killed. Uh, and he was, of course, not married. And so he had no children. And so his title passed to his uncle being my grandfather. The men who will be taking part in this invasion have largely boarded vessels in North Africa. Uh, they've sailed from there uh, to form up and concentrate on the north coast of Sicily before sailing across to Salerno. They've been on board for many hours uh, in relatively high seas and shortly before they are committed to this action they learn of the Italian capitulation. Um, many of those men would have built themselves up, put themselves in a particular frame of mind in preparation for combat and all of a sudden that's shaken, they don't necessarily know what to expect. Um, but it isn't the Italian army defending those breaches, it's the Germans, and the Germans know they're coming. Just behind me is Vietri Beach, where two commando and Henry landed. Just imagine the carnage and chaos as the troops fought to secure the beachhead against tough, entrenched German opposition. What must they have been thinking the moments before the invasion began?
After fierce fighting, by the end of day one, Henry and two commando had pushed through what is a quiet Vietri town today and fought off a German counterattack. However, crucially, they had not linked up with the American invasion force. What followed over the next eight days were sustained German counterattacks, increasing in both ferocity and frequency, as German commanders understood the Allied dispositions thanks to the failure to link up uh, and their growing confidence. As a result of that, they were able to push some of those forward Allied positions back uh, and at times even threaten the bridgeheads itself. Allied forces were, were fighting in small scattered units uh, in the steep foothills and the obstacle-strewn plain, often facing an enemy they couldn't see and didn't expect to encounter. Um, pressure would have been continuous and many men would have heard but not seen the actions that were engaging their comrades. Um, it's overwhelmingly an infantryman's battle thanks to the terrain in which they are fighting um, and the limitations that presents for the use of firepower and armour. I'm here in the hills above Salerno at what the British troops call Pimple Hill. If I were here in 1943, I'd be surrounded by German machine gun positions, firing down the hill at British troops as they try to advance to take the positions above me. Two commando fought hard, but sadly, many men were lost, and it was here that Henry was cut down by machine gun fire. I speak not of his titles, but of himself. We will ask the question of all those who knew him well, and are therefore the best qualified to give the true answer. We will ask it first of his fellow officers and men. They will tell you of his bravery, his utter fearlessness in the face of danger. It was fully in keeping with this that he died leading his men in a heroic attack against the German defences. They will tell you more. They will tell you of a young man unspoilt by great titles, a man of great personal charm, loved by all with whom he came in contact, whether officers or men. I think that, again, is a wonderful short uh, paragraph. In a family like, like ours, the, the holder of the title is head of the family and manager of the estates and all of that, um, suddenly his, his sudden death affected very much his mother, who was still alive, widowed, uh, and his, his sister. Although Henry was buried on Pimple Hill, that's not where his story ends. Like so many others, he was buried in a makeshift grave on a battlefield. But how is it that Henry and thousands of other casualties are buried where they are today in our cemeteries across Italy? One of the interesting things about the work of the Commission after the Second World War, as opposed to the First, is that we knew what we were going to be doing because of our work in the 1920s after the First World War. So it was decided for the big campaigns, like the one in Italy, uh, that burials would take place when they needed to, but that really good permanent sites for memorials would be chosen later on, and many burials were going to be concentrated into those, rather than being left where they had originally been created. And this is why we have a smaller number of cemeteries in somewhere like Italy, compared to how many cemeteries were left behind in Belgium and France after the First World War. Salerno War Cemetery is an example of one of these. So the site was chosen as a good place for a permanent war cemetery after the landings uh, and graves that had been made in other places, including on the battlefield, were brought to Salerno. And the grave of the Duke of Wellington is an example of one of these. So the Duke died in the fighting on Pimple Hill and he was originally buried near where he fell. 
and his body, well, his grave with his body, were brought here to Salerno War Cemetery uh, several months later as part of the creation of the permanent cemetery as the campaign moved on. Those who have been prepared to die for their country and are buried in the place where they died, in the country where they died, should, of course, be looked after in the best possible way. And I really respect and admire those who not only carry out the work, but those who uh, decided to create the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. All of our sites are beautiful, tranquil places of reflection. Now, planning a site like this is one thing, but maintaining it is another. We have teams of dedicated gardeners who look after all of our sites. This cemetery has a special tante cose per me. Io sono la terza generazione che lavora nel cimitero. Questo cimitero è stato costruito da mio pa da mio nonno e dopo una lunga carriera di mio nonno è subentrato mio padre e da 14 anni lavoro io in questo cimitero. Quindi per me dire cosa questo cimitero di speciale è una domanda molto molto personale perché io sono cresciuto vedendo mio nonno e mio padre che lavoravano qui. La cosa spettacolare del nostro lavoro è quello di poter stare contemporaneamente a contatto con la natura e ricevere sempre nuovi stimoli perché le cose cambiano e cambia il clima, cambia tutto e inoltre abbiamo la possibilità di essere a contatto con la storia, la storia reale, la storia recente del nostro paese. Il nostro lavoro principalmente è quello di gestire la manutenzione di questi siti costruiti subito dopo la seconda guerra mondiale, esattamente questo cimitero è nato uh, sulla triste storia dell'operazione Avalanche del 9 settembre del 43 che uh, ha visto, cioè è stata proprio qui di fronte a noi sul mare, questa è stata tutta l'area della battaglia e questi sono diciamo i caduti che sono che purtroppo ci hanno lasciato durante quelle tristi fasi della nostra storia. Salerno mattered because it marked the beginning of a new campaign uh, and far from being the soft underbelly uh, Italy proved to be a tough and gruelling fight against a determined and skillful enemy. However, fighting that determined and skillful enemy in Italy prevented those forces from being employed against the Soviet Union or in Northwest Europe against an invasion that would come the following year. Though diluting Allied forces in this way proved controversial at the time, it is true that in crude numbers the Germans deployed more divisions in Italy than did the Allies, suggesting at some level that the strategy worked. Our sites are a part of history and they need to be visited, viewed and experienced firsthand. Over 1800 men lie in our Salerno War Cemetery alone in our care. Each are commemorated equally as they are around the world. Dukes next to privates, each with their own story to tell. They were brought together by the work of hundreds of men and women and cared for by a dedicated team of experts. It was their mission to liberate Italy from German occupation. It's our mission to care for them in perpetuity. So anybody who visits sites like these can help keep their memory alive.